Hi folks, uh, hope everybody's okay. It's good to be with you today. Uh, my name's Jason and I'm here to uh, share the gospel and share the word of God today. So let's pray. I'm a bit tired. It's my day off today, but um, uh, I preached this sermon yesterday on Sunday uh, to the Haywood Reform Fellowship, which is just a small group of people who meet uh, from various evangelical backgrounds and uh, who love the word of God and want to study the word of God. And I'm just giving you the message that I gave yesterday. Um, so I hope it's uh, going to be a blessing to you. Okay, we'll see if we can get a, a bit of light. Sorry, I'll just see if I can get a, a bit of light. A bit more light for you there. There we are. There we are. That's a bit, that's a bit better. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you turn to uh, Psalm uh, 78 in the Word of God, Psalm uh, <clears throat> let's pray father god we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and uh, we thank you for your grace and we give you the praise and the glory today we confess our foolish ways and our sin and we ask for your help and strength lord in your name and for your glory amen a text uh, that might be uh, a way of trying to remember uh, what we're studying today is Psalm 78, verse 52. It says, But made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. So that's the text that you could take. But made his own people to go forth like sheep, guided them in the wilderness like a flock. I'm just going to pray again because I'm feeling a little bit tired and I need the strength of God. And... Um, it's good to be with you today. Um, forgive me for feeling a bit tired. I'm uh, doing a heck of a lot of evangelism and outreach at the moment. And uh, so I need your prayers. Let's pray again. Father, we, we acknowledge our weakness today. We acknowledge our sin, Lord. And we just pray that you forgive us today, Lord. And we acknowledge our weakness, Lord, and our need of your grace and your love and mercy. Father, we just bow before you today. You are the great I am. You are the great and living God. And so, Father, we just bow before you and trust in you, the great almighty God. We pray, O oh God, that you might be pleased to bless us now in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. As children, I can you can remember um, your parents um, looking after you, and you maybe wanted toffees or wanted pocket money or whatever, and and you wanted this or you wanted that, but you probably took for granted as a little child who put the clothes on your back, who put the food on the table, and we we take for granted or took for granted our parents when we were little kids. We didn't realize what they were doing for us. And, and in a way, Psalm 78 is like that. The people of God didn't realize or appreciate the goodness of God, what he was doing for us, what he was doing for his people. And that is the message of the sermon today, the goodness of God, the doctrine of the goodness of God. If you turn to James uh, chapter 1, verse 17, James chapter 1, verse 17, James uh, chapter 1, James uh, chapter 1, verse 17, it says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift comes from God. That's the goodness of God. And if you saw, turn to Psalm 51, Psalm uh, 51. We see the goodness of God in everyday life. But we also see the goodness of God in forgiveness. Have, Psalm 51 verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, 
according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. We see the mercy of God in practical everyday life, but we see the mercy of God in uh, the forgiveness of sin, that Christ died on that cross to save us from our sin. We have a good God. And in Psalm 78, we see the goodness of God. And my first point is this, the goodness of God and the younger generation. At Oxford University, uh, recently they've announced that they're going to change the university, de university degree, which is the oldest degree that they have, to not study Christian theology anymore, but other th theologies such as Buddhism and Hinduism. That is uh, a showing of secularization and the minimalization of Christianity in secular culture. You wouldn't see them down, uh, downplaying the Islamic uh, degree or uh, the degree in Hinduism or degree in Buddhism, but the degree in theology, i.e. Christian theology, they've downgraded it. There is a secularization going on and a limitation or a marginalization of the Christian faith. And in that, we are forgetting that the generation, the younger generation, are being captured by the secularists, the Islamicists, and all the other uh, postmodern uh, views that are out there. Psalm 78, verse 1 to 7. Give ear, all my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth, and I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them know to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The word of God here is saying that we have a sacred trust to teach the younger generation, that whether you're a father or mother, whether you're a pastor or youth worker or Sunday school teacher, or whether you're just working in general life or a grandmother or a granddad, all of us have a responsibility to teach the younger generation about the living God. The Sunday school movement over a few hundred years ago was started and children were reached. But today, especially in the UK, children's work in churches is fallen by the wayside. There's not as much as it used to be. Also, not only children's work, but family worship. There are very few who are actually doing family worship and teaching their children about the word of God. It says in Proverbs 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and ammunition of the Lord. And in Matthew chapter 19, 4, the Lord said, Suffer little children to come unto me. What happens if you lose your memory? If you lose your memory, you, 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 you're not able to function. And young people are losing the memory of who they are. They are forgetting and not being told about the living God. And they will be lost. They will not know who they are. And it's your responsibility to teach the younger generation the pure word of God, to teach them about the living God and to take that responsibility seriously and to pray that God would raise up Sunday school teachers, youth workers, preachers, pastors that have a heart to teach children, that fathers and mothers and grandparents will take their role and responsibility seriously and teach the younger generation the word of God and everybody in secular society whether it be the police or teachers or lawyers or whoever they may be, that they will bring people back to the living God. So that's uh, the goodness of God and the younger generation. Secondly, the goodness of God and unbelief. Unbelief. When I was a child, we went to Blackpool for our holidays and, you know, we'd, me, my mum and dad would uh, pay to go on rides and, 
get me uh, candy floss, but I'd be like, I want more, 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 more. And we like that as children, more, 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 more. Uh, and never satisfied. And that is what was happening with the people of God in this chapter. They wanted more. It didn't matter what they got. They wanted more. And they were in rebellion. Look at verse 8. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Verse 9. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in the law and forgot his works and his wonders, and he showed them. Verse 11, uh, verse uh, 30. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. 32. For all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Verse 36. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. Verse 37. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in covenant. Verse 42. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Verse 56. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not his testimonies. There was rebellion in the house of God. They weren't listening to God's word. They weren't remembering God's word. They weren't entering into the battles that they had to fight, but running away from the battles. Are you like that? Are you forgetting God's word? Are you running away from responsibility? But I want to say this, and this is my catchword in this sermon. The issue is not the issue. The issue is not the issue. You see, for them, the issue was they needed food. They needed this. They needed that. But that was not the issue. The issue for them was they needed to remember that God was good. And the issue is not the issue for you. You're saying the issue is oh, only if God would do this for me, if only God would do that for me. But it doesn't matter whether you have that issue sorted out because there's one big problem with all these issues that you keep complaining about. And that is you're not trusting in the goodness of God. That's the issue. You need to get a grounding and a doctrine of the goodness of God in your mind and heart. God is a good God. And rather than complaining about your issue, ask God to teach you what he wants to teach you and to learn, help you to learn in that experience about him. If we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 1 to 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. One to thirteen. Moreover, brethren, I will not have you be ignorant how that all your fathers were under a cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed from them and the rock was Christ. Now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur. Ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples and they are written for our redomination upon whom the ends of the world are come wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall there had no temptation taken you but such is common to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it so you know, that passage is given because they they rebelled against God and judgment came. And it's a teaching upon us, showing us that we shouldn't walk in unbelief, that God doesn't like it when we're walking in unbelief.
Now you might say, well, Jay, well, what about people who slice falls apart? Don't we have to have compassion? Of course we do. We're to be patient and understanding. But you now know the doctrine of the goodness of God, and you'll be able to stand in a much stronger way and help those who are weaker brethren. I remember when I was a young boy of about 10, we had a battle, a group of our gang, we had a fight with a wasp nest. And we battled with a wasp nest. And uh, we threw sticks and stones and all the rest of it. But I tell you what, we were outnumbered 30 to 1. Those wasps came out and they, they didn't have show us who was the boss. We never fought with a wasp nest again. And God is trying to teach you in your situation with your problems that you need to learn from them. You know, it's no good keep making the same mistakes all the time. You've got to move on. It's no good moaning and groaning and, and going on and on and on about the same problem and never learning from it. You've got to move on like we had to move on, not fight in a wasp nest. It was a silly thing to do. We had to realize that that was not wise. Yeah. And move on and learn from the experience. And God wants us to be moving on and learning and growing in our walk with the Lord, not static and staying still. In John chapter 6, verse 35, it says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Our Lord met the needs, practical needs of the bread of people, but he met the spiritual needs. And the great lesson that God wants you to learn today is that you can trust him. He will meet your need. He is a good God. And it's not the problems that are the problems. The problem is you're not resting in the goodness of God. Now, if you want to turn in your own study to Tim, 2 Timothy 3, 7, and it talks about people who learning but never learning. They are always studying but never really learning about God. Let us grow in our experience. Let us move on in our experience and realize that God is good. And if we realize that truth, we will grow in our experience of God. But if we don't re re learn that truth, we'll be static in our experience. And we won't be moving on from the problems that we face. So the next point that I want to talk about is the goodness of God and his provision. Now, I want to reiterate this again because it's so important. The issue is not the issue. Now, imagine uh, someone, uh, uh, let, let's imagine you were caught for drink driving. And the police uh, took you to the police station and started questioning you. And you, was, you were crying and getting upset and saying, well, my driving, I could have turned this way or I could have turned that way. And it, that, you know, I should have done this or I should have done that. And the police are looking at you dumbfounded and they're saying, that's not the problem. The problem is you were drunk. You know, you're saying the issue is your driving. No, 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 it's not the driving. The issue is you were drunk and you shouldn't have been drunk. And God is saying to you today, the issue is not the issue. You're going on about, why don't you give me this? Or why don't you sort out this? Or why don't you do this for me, God? And God's saying, no, that's not the problem. The problem is you're not trusting me. The problem is you're not resting in me. The problem is you don't see that I'm good. And when you see that I'm good, it'll be okay. You see, we look at the provision of God, that God is good. If you look at verse uh, Psalm 78, verse 12, it says, marvelous things did he do in the side of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. Verse 13, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as a heap. Verse 14, in the daytime also he led them in the cloud also in the night with a light of fire. Verse 15, he gave them drink. He clothed the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink. And out of the great depths, verse 16, streams, he brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers verse 24 and he had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven and verse uh 20, 44 he protected them uh if you go to verse 44 and he turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink and all that rest from verse 34 to uh, verse 51 you go to verse 51 is protection of god's people and smote all the firstborn in Egypt and the chief of the strength in the tabernacle of Ham. So God uh, provided food, he provided water, he provided uh, protection for his people. God is a good God. There's a story of an evangelist who lost his wife. She died and he stood up for 
what he regarded as truth and he lost uh, support from churches but yet god was good to him god is good john newton the the writer of amazing grace wrote this i cannot stop he replied what shall the old african blasphemer stop while he can speak then round about 1806 he was dying and he wrote this oh for grace to meet the approach death with a humble thankful resigned spirit becoming my profession that i may not stain my character by impatience jealousy or any hateful temper but my but may be prepared and permitted to depart in peace and hope and be enabled if i can speak to bear me testimony to thy faithfulness and goodness with thy last breath in other words he's coming to death but he's walking in humility he knows that god is good and he's not going to panic he's not going to struggle he's not going to worry god is with him even in the approach of death he can trust in his god psalm 34 8 oh taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man that trusteth in him at Nahum 1 7 the Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knoweth them that trusteth in him Philippians 4 19 but may, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ God is good and will meet your need there's a story of a tree that was near a lake and this tree uh, began to crumble and die but as it died uh, the man walked past uh, some time later and found that there were buds and one day there were going to be more trees that grow from that one tree and in your life you might feel you're hitting difficulties and problems but there are buds within your life God is doing a new work within you He's bringing new life new purpose and uh, there is going to be fruit in the midst of this pain that you're going through psalm 23 verse 6 surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever matthew 7 11, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts uh, unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him so we've come to the end We've come to the end, and if you turn to Revelation chapter 22. I heard a story the other day, and I'm going to retell it. It's called Checkmate. There was a painter, and he painted a picture of a young man being checkmated in a, check, in, in a chess match. And there was consternation and sadness on the young man's face that he'd been checkmated. And so the picture was done and people looked at the picture and then one day a grandmaster in chess uh, saw the picture and was concerned about it and went to see the painter and he took a chess board and he took the chess pieces there and he said I, I'm a bit worried about your picture it's not true and what what that young man is not going to be checkmated and he moved a piece and he said the man the the, the enemy of this man the, the the opponent of this man with one move can be checkmated and the young man's okay you might feel like that today you might feel that life is checkmating you you might feel your enemies are checkmating you but if you trust God there is a grand master and his name is Jesus Christ and he will checkmate your enemies he will checkmate your circumstances my friend God is with you today I want to turn to Revelation chapter 22 and he said, he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear and crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on the side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve manner of fruits, and yielded their fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and this servant shall serve him. And they shall serve his face, and his, uh, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And there shall be no night, and the day need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. They shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of thy holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must glory shortly be done. 
Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. In Revelation chapter 22, we see that all the promises of God are fulfilled. Not one promise of God will be left to fall to the ground. No, every promise will be fulfilled. God keeps his word. And God is with you today. And he will bring you home to glory. He will bring you all to the glory. And you will be with him forever and ever. God is with you, my friend. Not one promise will fall to the ground. So when you go in your life today and you face a crisis or you face more crises or you meet people whose lives are falling apart, remember the doctrine of the goodness of God, that God is good. He who created the world said it is good. Jesus said there is none, but, but God is good. God is good. And he will not fail you. And he will not let you down. And he will always be with you. No matter how you struggle. No matter what you face. God will be with you. And you will be okay. For we have an awesome God. We have a great God. We have a mighty God. We have a glorious God. And he will not fail you. He will not forsake you. He is with you right now. So walk in humility and humbleness today. Walk in the humility and the humbleness because you know that God is going to be with you. You know that God is going to be with you and he will not let you down and he will not forsake you, my friend. We have a great and awesome God. There's an old hymn, in heavenly love abiding. In heavenly love abiding we abide. In the love of God today. And none shall pluck you out of his hand. None shall bring you out of his hand. For it says in the word of God. All things work together for good. To them that love God. And you're safe in his arms today. You're safe in his arms today my friend. And God will keep you. And God will be with you. So wipe away those tears. Wipe away that despair. Wipe away the lack of hope and despair because there is hope. There is a hope for you today because God goes with you. And God will not forsake you. If he can feed millions of people in the desert with manna from heaven, if he can protect them against the enemies of Pharaoh, the, against Pharaoh and his armies, if he can do that for Israel, what can he do for you? If he was willing to send his own son and smite him with the, his wrath uh, and, and, and do that for you, what will he not do right now? Every pain, every problem, every difficulty that you are going through now is working for your good because the hand of Almighty God and his goodness is working on your behalf. And he is bringing out good in you. He is bringing out humility, patience, kindness, tenderness, love. All these problems are working in your heart to make you more sanctified, to be more like Christ. And it is painful at times. And it is hard at times. But you will look back, my friend, in your past. And you will say, God is good. I would not swap my pain. I would not swap my problems that I have had. Because I can declare and I can say God is good. He has taught me and is teaching me to trust him. He has taught me to look lean upon him. He has taught me to look to him. He has taught me that he is great. He has taught me that he is awesome. He has taught me that I can rely upon him. He has taught me to trust in his power, to trust in his greatness, to trust in him. That is what he has taught me. And every pain, every tear, every problem, every tragedy, everything that I have ever faced has taught me at this point right now in my life to lean upon Yahweh, to lean upon the great I am, to lean upon God. And every pain and trouble and problem that you will face, 
that great grand lesson will come pounding in your ears, pounding in your ears, whispering in your ears, flooding your mind, flooding your heart. The lesson that it is teaching you is this. God is good. Even in the midst of tragedy, even in the midst of death, God is good. I love that song. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me underneath me all around me is the current of thy love oh the deep deep love of jesus love from shore to shore of the best how oh, he loves me how oh, he loves me i don't know the rest i've made a bit up there if you're in tears today and broken today there is a god there is a mighty god mighty over your life he is so mighty so awesome so great so glorious so majestic he is so powerful, so great, that your tears, my friend, and your brokenness and your despair will be melted away like ice as the sun comes up. And it comes up, and the sun shines, and the, the snow melts. So your brokenness and your pain so broken right now so in pain right now so crushed are you right now but as you meditate in the next few days and weeks and months and years ahead and as you meditate on the doctrine of the goodness of god as you meditate on this play this play this play this sermon every day until you feel the sun rising you feel the greatness of God and the majesty of God and His goodness over your life. God demonstrates His love towards us that while we were yet dead, Christ died for us. Yet while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There will be a day when you are stronger. There will be a day when you look past at your pain and you'll say, God is good. I guarantee it. Guarantee it, my friend. Do not give hope up hope. Do not be cast down in despair. Do not be broken and, and, and left on the wayside as if there is no hope for your life, whatever it may be, whether you've had divorce, whether you've lost a loved one. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. I know you're crushed. I know you're broken. But there'll be a day. There'll be a day. When the doctrine of the goodness of God begins to fill your mind and heart and the sun will come up in your life and you'll be strong again. Not in your own strength, but in the strength of the Lord. God bless you. Let us pray. Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters today. Dear God, we do not look to man, we do not look to the church, but we look to you, O oh God. Man will fail us. Many out there today are feeling crushed and broken and wondering which way to turn. With that old hymn, guide me, O oh thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Lead me through this land, bread of heaven. Feed me forevermore. Father, I pray for your people today who are broken and discouraged 
and down today. May they meditate on this psalm. May they meditate on Romans 8, where it talks a lot about your love. May they meditate on it daily, weekly. May they meditate on it until the sun comes up in their life. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are broken today. The tears that they are crying. The hurt, the pain that they are going through. How overwhelmed they feel. Father, I pray flood them today with comfort. Flood them today with your grace. Flood them today with your joy. Flood them today with your power. Flood them today with your glory. Flood them today with all the goodness of your strength and power. And may they know that you are the God today. Comfort them, Lord, for it says in your word, you are the God of all comfort. Comfort them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hope that was a blessing. This is my day off. I'm supposed to be chilling out today, but I preached this sermon yesterday at a, a little fellowship. And I hope it's been a blessing to you. And uh, feel free to copy it and Make DVDs of it if you want to and pass it on to people if you think it'll be a, a help and a comfort to people. Uh, don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com. I uh, pray that that website gets used, uh, jasonburnspreacher.com. And don't forget, I'm out nearly every day preaching the gospel somewhere in the UK, uh, spreading the gospel, taking groups of folk out with me, and we're just... Uh, talking to lots of people, getting lots of literature out, and uh, pray that there will be a harvest. Pray that God will bring in a harvest uh, for the seed that we're sowing, because we're sowing a lot of seed. And uh, so God bless you. Have a lovely day, and um, God bless you to your families, whether you're a believer or unbeliever, whether you're Muslim, Jew, Hindu, skeptic, atheist, agnostic, whoever you are today, have a lovely day. May God's peace shine upon you. May God's love be with you, and have a lovely, lovely day today. And uh, if you need to talk to me, uh, you can uh, contact me through my website at jasonburnspreacher.com and just the message on there. You can, it, there's contact details there. If you want to keep in touch, if you want to come out with me and do evangelism with me, open air preaching, whatever, feel free to, to join me. So God bless you and love to everybody out there. God bless. <laughs>